much Bibles. Time for some Bible study tonight. Whoa, whoa, whoa. All right. Yeah, I'm running out of things to do when we start our, our, our sessions. Let me change this up just a little bit. Hope everybody is well tonight. Uh, it's time to get back into the Word, get into Ephesians tonight. Uh, hello, Dennis. Hello, Wanda. God bless y'all. So, uh, hope everybody has had a good week so far. Hey, David. Uh, God bless you. Hey, Blake. Um, uh, been a crazy week in the Reed home, as as always. Hey, Brother Kevin. Uh, but no, it's been a good week. Uh, hey, Cindy. For those that are still fighting, uh, we are praying for you, uh, praying you get your strength back, oxygen levels will get to where they need to be, and lungs will be restored, and uh, we're just believing for God's healing touch to be upon our church family, those uh, still struggling and stuff, but uh, heard a lot of, you know, there's still been a lot of praise reports, people are, are recovering and getting <clears throat> to church, back to church and stuff, and uh, just... Uh, just, just a lot of good, good praise reports. But uh, we're so grateful for everybody uh, and the prayers, the church family coming together. Right, we're rising up together. We're rallying around everyone who's fighting this thing. So, uh, just so grateful. Uh, God bless all of you. Uh, remember, get your Bibles. We are going back to Ephesians tonight, chapter five, and we're going to be talking about walking in wisdom tonight. We'll do a little review from last week, but. Uh, you got to make sure you're in your it got your Bibles in uh, Ephesians five, and I, I'm pretty sure we're not going to get out of Ephesians five tonight. We're just going to break down some scriptures, and uh, you know how it is. I like I like I like breaking things down and, and getting in the Word and just uh, applying it to our lives. Amen. But uh, thank y'all so much your faithfulness every Wednesday night. Man, I love y'all so much. Thank y'all for joining us. Uh, but uh, let's pray. Uh, please remember the Stewart family, that God would just be with them and comfort them tonight. And uh, can we just mention Israel tonight in our prayers? There's a lot going on in Israel right now. We'll pray for peace in Jerusalem tonight. All right, so let's just pray. Lord Jesus, we thank you and praise you for the opportunity again, Lord, that you've given us to meet virtually in this, in this Bible study, Lord God. You've given us another opportunity to open up your word and to study your word. Lord God, thank you for our country. That We have no fear tonight of anybody breaking in our homes and taking the Bible from us and, 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 and persecuting us because we are, are, are talking about you. And yet there's other Christians in other countries, Lord God, our brothers and sisters in Christ who, who are meeting in secret because of that persecution. Lord, may we not ever forget the freedoms that we have here in America, Lord. Thank you for them, Lord God. Thank you. Lord, tonight we just pray for the Stewart family that, God, you would comfort that family and bless them with your peace and presence tonight, Lord God. We pray tonight for Israel. We pray for peace in Jerusalem tonight, Lord, that you would just please be with all those involved with these, uh, this, these, these war, this war that's broke out over in Israel, Lord God. But uh, I know, Lord God, you're in control, and that gives us great confidence. Lord God, and uh, thank you for each person that joins us on Wednesday nights that is joining us tonight, Lord God. You know every one of them. You know their heart. You know their needs, and I just pray that you would shower your blessings upon them tonight, Lord, and I pray that the word will come alive to them tonight, and, and Lord, as we talk about walking in wisdom, I pray tonight, Lord God, that they would just have uh, an impartation of wisdom come over them, Lord God, and they would see Lord, how you want us to walk uh, in our identity in Christ. So, Lord, have your way tonight. We love you. We praise you and we magnify you. In Jesus' name we pray. And everybody said, Amen. <coughs> Sorry, I haven't apologized. So remember, I'm supposed to apologize first so I don't have to apologize anymore in case I have to cough tonight. So I'm saying sorry now. So I hope you accept it now. That way we can roll on. Amen. All right, so... Let's look back before we start going forward, and let's look at what we talked about last week. Uh, let's just do a little quick review, uh, going through all my notes here. Uh, so we started out last week talking about uh, finishing up some of the points that we made uh, as far as ways, uh, what the new walk in Christ looks like. 
And uh, we, we started talking about last week about uh, don't grieve the Holy Spirit and exactly what that means. Well, we are the temple of the Holy Spirit, right? He lives in us. He's with us on our good days. He's with us on our bad days. So don't grieve the Holy Spirit means that we, that we don't make him sorrowful by, by allowing sin to control us, anger to control us. Uh, don't, 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 don't steal. Don't use corrupt words. Uh, don't lie. Uh, just, just all the things of the old sinful nature, when we do those, we grieve the Holy Spirit, don't we? So we don't want to grieve the Holy Spirit. Um, we talked about how in Ephesians 5, 1 through 2, it says, Be imitators of God as dear children and walk in love. We, we was talking about how beautiful that image is as children try to imitate their parents. And, and now we're imitating our Heavenly Father by doing what? He is love, so we walk in love. Uh, so that was that was awesome to think about it that way. Um, we we talked about the uh, sins that should have no place in uh, the life of a, a believer of God uh, among God's people. Uh, we talked about fornication, uncleanness, covetousness, filthiness, foolish talking, and coarse jesting. Uh, these sins should have no place among God's people. So we, we dove into a lot of that last week. We defined a lot of those terms, uh, finding out what they mean. And uh, that's when we jumped into to walking in light. So we went from walking in love, this, this new walk. Our identity in Christ enables our walk for Christ. So we're to walk in love, and then we started talking about walking in light. We went to verses 8 through 9 in Ephesians 5. Uh, it says, walk as children of light. Uh, we made these comments that when we walk in good, godly, uh, goodness and righteousness and truth, we are walking in the light. But more than that, we're walking in the Spirit, aren't we? Because only the Spirit of God can produce those fruits of the Spirit in and through our lives. Uh, when the fruit of the Spirit begin to come forth from our lives, these fruits serve as light shining in the darkness of this world. So that's a really cool thought. Uh, verse 10, Ephesians 5.10, uh, we, we talk about finding out what is acceptable uh, to the Lord. Our lives should represent what is acceptable to the Lord, uh, nah, not what is unacceptable to Him, right? Uh, and then we got to talking about how light, the light exposes uh, the things that are done in darkness. Uh, in verses 11 through 14, we read these. Uh, we, we talked about how we need to realize that God's word is a lamp into our feet, a light into our path. Uh, light exposes the darkness, right? Things done in the darkness. Uh, God's word reveals what is acceptable to the Lord and what is not. And we represent that light, that truth. So uh, that's, that's pretty wild to think about that. And as we go into this world, light exposes whatever is done in the darkness. So we no longer have fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but we are called to actually expose those works as being unacceptable to the Lord. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, there are many people in our world today that are walking around in darkness, uh, but we wanted to make sure that we made the point last week that we walk in love. So we're not to be judgmental and critical, right? But we're, we're in out of love, I love you so much, I need to tell you what God's Word says about sin, uh, about, about unrighteousness, about the things that, that are part of our old sinful nature, part of this, this old, this cursed world. So uh, we talked about that and that light, how we're to live our lives in such a way that we're, we're helping people, we're discipling people, we're, we're exposing the darkness, showing them what God's Word says about how we should live and, and shouldn't live. And, and by love, we're believing we're, we're winning people over to the Lord. Uh, we're, we're loving people into the kingdom. Um, so we're going we're gonna to start with verse 12 tonight, Ephesians 5, verse 12. Um, and, and we're just going to finally get to this walk in wisdom, and then we're just going to start breaking down Scripture. All right, so... Uh, Verse 12 says, For it is shameful even to speak of those things which are done by them in secret. Uh, just a couple thoughts on that. We live in a world of shameful, wicked, immoral, evil acts. And, and it blows my mind sometimes the things that we hear on our news about what one human being has done to somebody else. Here, the Bible teaches us 
that some sins are so despicable that, that they should not even be mentioned, much less discussed. So this is just a little warning to us. You know, there are some things we should not even be talking about that people are doing in this world. Uh, it's a disgrace. It's horrible, some of the things that people are doing in our world. Um, so let's go to verse 13 and 14. It says, But all things that are exposed are made manifest by the light, for whatever makes manifest is light. Therefore, he says, Awake, you who sleep, arise from the dead, and Christ will give you light. Stop right there for just a moment. The pure and illuminating light of God's word exposes all the secrets of sin, doesn't it? So there's nothing secret, nothing in our hearts that, that, that is secret. God's word exposes all the secrets of sin, uh, I, I like that. But all things that are exposed are made manifest by the light. God's word is that ultimate light. And I'm telling you, when the spotlight of God shines on your life, there's nothing hidden. I mean, there's nothing. You can't hide anything from God. It reveals all of our, our iniquity, all of our sin. We can't hide. The light shines and exposes them all. But verse 14, I like this because it's almost as though Paul gives an invitation to salvation. He uses those words, awake and arise. He says, awake you who sleep and arise from the dead and Christ will give you light. Amen. And that's what took place when we got saved, wasn't it? We become awake. We arose from the dead. Jesus gave us salvation. I just, I like that verse because it's almost like he just gives this little call to salvation. Hey, awake you who sleep, arise from the dead and Christ will give you light. Amen. Amen. So now we get into the meat of what we really want to talk about tonight, and that is starting with verse 15. Ephesians 5, verse 15. It says, See then that you walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise. We are called to walk in wisdom, right? We're called to walk in love. We're called to walk in light. And now we are, we are being instructed to walk in wisdom. So we've already talked about walking in love, walking in light. So what's the Bible say about this walk in, uh, uh, of wisdom, walking in wisdom? I want us to break the first part of this down because whenever I see a word, it's sort of like, whoa, that's a big old word. What does that mean? When I see that word circumspectly, I'm like, so okay, let's break this word down. What does circumspectly mean? mean, all right? Paul says walk circumspectly. You just pull that word up in like a Strong's concordance or something like that. It simply means to walk perfectly, exactly, diligently. Diligently. It means to walk carefully, okay? It means to walk about watching on every hand to avoid danger and enemies. Walk circumspectly. Then look what it says. There's a contrast here, isn't it? He says, Paul says, walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise. So, fools don't walk circumspectly. Fools do not walk perfectly. A fool does not walk exactly. A fool does not walk diligently. And a fool does not walk carefully. Fools do not watch on every hand, right? Fools will, will walk into danger and they will be deceived by their enemies. So we don't want to be like the fool. The fool is not so named, and, and let's, let's remember this, the fool's not named a fool, bless you, because of an intellectual uh, uh, limit, but a fool in the Bible is named this because of unbelief and because of their wickedness, okay? Okay. Uh, in the Bible, the fool is a person who lives apart from God and against God's law. The fool cannot comprehend the truth of, of his own uh, sinfulness, his own sinful condition. Believers are to avoid behaving like fools. He says, walk circumspectly, carefully, 
Walk, looking on both sides. Be aware. A fool does not do that. He says, but he says, walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise. You walk in wisdom when you walk circumspectly, okay? I, I have a little homework activity for you, I, just as something like a challenge to you. I would encourage you to go to the book of Proverbs this week and just do a simple word study on the word fool, okay? Just look up the word fool, maybe in the back of your Bible, but look, look for Proverbs and see, see how many times it's, it's in the word, uh, in the book of Proverbs. Of course, Proverbs is a book of wisdom, wise sayings from one of the wisest people other than Jesus to walk the face of the earth, and that is King Solomon. Um, in a, in, I, I use the Bible Gateway on my computer, Bible Gateway app, so I can go in there and I can look up fool and it will show all the times fool is mentioned in the book of Proverbs. And that's just a little homework activity just so you can see the difference. Because many times he uses, he'll say, uh, the fool does this, but a person that's wise does this. Just a little word study. You know, as we just, just see how to walk in wisdom, we don't want to walk as the fool walks, okay? Just a few examples here. Matt, uh, Proverbs 1 verse 7 says, Fear of the Lord is the foundation of true knowledge, but fools despise wisdom and discipline. So that tells us how not to be. A fool despises wisdom and discipline. We don't want to be like the fool. We want to accept wisdom. We want to accept discipline, right? Proverbs 12, 15, you, you know this. Fools think their own way is right, but the wise listen to others. A fool, he, he thinks his way's right, but, but if you're wise, you're going to be getting advice from others, and you're going to take it all into account. Uh, verse 16 of that verse, uh, Proverbs 12, verse 16 says, A fool is quick-tempered, but a wise person stays calm when insulted. And then finally, just as some examples, Proverbs 13, verse 16, Wise people think before they act. Fools don't, and even brag about their foolish Ness. Remember, we're talking here, he says, walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise. And that's just a little homework activity. We are called to walk in wisdom, not as fools. And remember, God's word is a lamp unto our feet and a light to our path, so it will show us how to walk in wisdom and how not to walk like a fool, all right? Um, Let's go to the next few verses here. Uh, we're going to see what the walk of wisdom looks like. And that's why we're just going to slow down here. We're going to read verses 15 through 21. And then we're going to take these and break them down like we are accustomed to doing. And just talk about each one. Because this is what the walk of wisdom looks like. It's going to be described for us. It's, it's going to be illuminated to us so that we can walk this way. So let's read this starting with verse uh, 15. I'm sorry, starting with verse 15 uh, through 21. It says, See then that you walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise. Verse 16, Redeeming the time because the days are evil. Therefore, do not be unwise, but understand what the will of the Lord is. And do not be drunk with wine in which is dissipation, but be filled with the Spirit, speaking to one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord, giving thanks always for all things to God the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, submitting to one another in the fear of God." So, for the rest of the class tonight, let's break these down so that we will know what the walk of wisdom looks like. So, verse 16, he says, Redeeming the time, because the days are evil. Redeeming the time. We, what does the word redeem mean? We know this means to buy up, doesn't it? to buy up for oneself, for one's use, meaning to make wise and sacred use 
of every opportunity for doing good. Let me, let me say that again. To redeem the time means that you make wise and sacred use of every opportunity. You know the value of time, right? We know time is so, so valuable. So we make wise and sacred use of every opportunity for what? For doing good and to glorify God. Think about it this way, okay? All our time in sin... I just want you to do a little rewind and just think for just a moment. All of your time in sin, all of my time in sin before Jesus, that was all wasted time. I want you to think about it. It was then that we were living for ourselves. We were serving sin. We were making bad decisions. We were hurting people with those decisions, right? All of that time was, was, was wasted time. We were living like a fool, right? We were living like a fool. So all that time was wasted time. But now we are in Christ. We have our identity in Christ. We're positioned in Christ. And we are living and walking in Him and for Him, right? But we know the value of time. And therefore, we now are making, making good, wise decisions about every, every second, every day. We, we want to make good, wise decisions for the glory of God, to do good, to follow God's way, to follow the, the will of the Lord, right? That's what redeeming the time means. We're buying it back. We're making good use of our time now, not wasting it like we used to when we were in sin. That was wasted time. But now we're buying it back by making wise decisions daily to glorify God, to make, make Him known to the world around us. That is the walk of wisdom. We know how valuable time is, and we're redeeming it. We're making good use of every second of, of our lives for God's glory, for good. Amen? Redeem the time, for the days are evil. That's what it looks like to walk in wisdom. Now let's go to verse 17. What does it look like to walk in wisdom? Therefore, do not be unwise, but understand what the will is of the Lord is. The unwise do not know what the will of the Lord is. Therefore, right, I think it is safe for us to say that the unwise are not in the Word of God. They're not reading the Word of God. They're not studying the Word of God. Why do I say that? Because the Word of God reveals the will of God. It says, do not be unwise, but understand what the will of the Lord is. Unwise people, they, they don't know what God's will is. Therefore, we can safely assume they are not in the Word of God because the Word of God reveals the will of God. It reveals the way of the wise. It reveals the way of the fool. We are learning tonight what, and and, and in, in this Bible study, in all Bible studies, we're learning what the will of the Lord is by studying the Word of God. The will of God is that we walk in wisdom. That's what we are learning in this study tonight. So if that person is unwise, who, that they don't know the will of God, then they obviously don't know the Word of God either. They're not in the Word of God. In the book of Ephesians, the Word of God is showing us the way we should walk and the way that we should not walk. Remember, in our study, it says, do not walk the way of the Gentiles anymore. That's how you used to be. You used to walk. We are, we are learning what the will of God is for our lives. And with that, he said, the unwise don't know the Lord's will. We're learning the Lord's will, so we are becoming wise. Woo! All right, I don't care what anybody says about you, all right? You are full of wisdom because you are studying the Word of God. And, and wise people understand what the will of the Lord is. Now, the unwise, they don't. Amen? Amen. 
Now, again, if we just did a word search, okay, and again, I use the Bible Gateway uh, program on my computer, and all I got to do is go to a search, the search bar, and just put in will of God. If we just did that, just as a curiosity, okay, so the unwise don't know the will of God, so I want to know the will of God. So let's just, let's just look those words up, will of of God, and let's see if those words come together in throughout Scripture, and I want to see what the will of God is for my life. Now, if you do that, you're going to have all these Scriptures that have the words will in it, of in it, and God in it, but then you will come to some passages that will actually have will of God. One of those is 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 3 through 5. Listen to what it says. It says, for this is the will of God. What is it? What is it? Your sanctification. Now, we learned some of this last week. It says that you should abstain from sexual immorality, that each of you should know how to possess his own vessel in sanctification and honor, not in passion of lust like the Gentiles who do not know God. So what is the will of God? It is our sanctification, that we are set apart from the world, and we no longer walk as the world is walking, but we are walking with our swag. We're walking in love. We're walking in light. We're walking in wisdom. So here is one instance where will of God is together, and we know then what God's will is for our lives. It's sanctification. We're no longer living like the people in the world, all right? Still loving. Remember we learned last week we're not participating, practicing in their sinful deeds, un, un, unfruitful works, but we still want to love on them and befriend them because we, we're, we're called to win them to Christ, right? To disciple them. The next one is, you'll find those three words together, will of God is in Romans 12, verse 2. And it says, And do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. What is the good and acceptable and perfect will of God, it's that we be not conformed to the world, but that we be transformed by the renewing of our minds. Guess what? Tonight we are smack dab right in the middle of God's will for our lives because we are being transformed by the renewing of our minds through the Word of God. Amen. Somebody just throw some clap hands on there. Woo! We're right in the will of God tonight, amen. We're being transformed by the renewing of our minds because we're in the Word of God tonight. We're finding out what His will is for our lives. So we're walking in wisdom. And then another scripture that, that you, when you read it, you, you'll see what I mean when I read 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 9, what the will of the Lord is. Now, now watch, pay close attention. It says, the Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some count slackness. He's coming again, all right? He's coming. And somebody might would ask, why is he taking so long? But he is long-suffering toward us. He's being patient with us. Listen to what it says here. Not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. So what, what is the will of the Lord? That everybody would come to repentance. Because it's not God's will that any should perish. Because he sent his son to die for the whole world. And he's not willing that any should perish. But his, his will is, is that all would receive his son as Savior, right? So here again, we know what God's will is. God's will is that none would perish, but that all would come to repentance. So just again, this was just another example of doing a word study just to simply find out what the will of God is for our lives. 
And again, we're, we're finding it out by doing this Bible study. Therefore, do not be unwise, but understand what the will of the Lord is. We are walking in wisdom tonight as we are understanding what God's will is for our lives. That's exciting. I want to be in God's will. Well, you're in it tonight, baby, because your mind's being transformed and you're learning what the will of the Lord is, all right? Now, verse 18. Oh, here's a doozy. All right, we're walking in wisdom. What's that look like? And do not be drunk with wine in which is dissipation, but be filled with the Spirit. So we're breaking these verses down, trying to find out what the walk of wisdom looks like. Now, just like the word circumspectly, when I see this word dissipation, I want to know what that means. So we're going to, first of all, take the first part of this verse and we're going to break this thing down. It says, and do not be drunk with wine in which is dissipation. What's that mean? Okay. The word dissipation, in the King James Version, it says excess, and which is excess. In the NIV, it's debauchery, debauchery, okay? Dissipation, debauchery, or debauchery, excess. What, what, is the, what does this mean? Do not be drunk with wine, for this is dissipation, all right? Well, let's look at some different translations and see if it helps us to define what this is trying to tell us. The New Living Translation says it this way. Don't be drunk with wine because that will ruin your life. So this dissipation means that, that getting drunk with wine will ruin your life. Let's look at the Amplified Version. It says, do not get drunk with wine for that is wickedness, corruption, and stupidity. So... This dissipation, when, when a person gets drunk with wine, they move into this realm of, of, of wickedness, corruption, and stupidity. Let's look at the message translation. It says, don't drink too much wine. That cheapens your life. And then the Living Bible says, don't drink too much wine for many evils lie along that path. So now tonight we understand, it says, and do not be drunk with wine, which is dissipation. We know tonight what that means. Don't be drunk with wine, for that will ruin your life. Don't get drunk with wine, for this is wickedness, corruption, and stupidity. Don't get drunk with wine, because that cheapens your life. Don't get drunk with wine, for there are many evils along that path. Now remember, we're wanting to walk in wisdom, right? One more verse for us tonight to learn what this is saying to us. Proverbs 20, verse 1, it says, Wine is a mocker, strong drink is a brawler, and whoever is led astray by it is not wise. So we don't want to be led astray by wine, right? We, we want to make sure that we are walking in wisdom. How do we walk in wisdom? We don't get drunk. That's, 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 that's Craig Reed's you know, summary of this. How do we walk in wisdom according to this verse? We don't get drunk, okay? Now, let's break it down a little bit more. Let's just talk some truth and common sense as we go into the second part of this verse. A person who is under the influence of alcohol. Let's think about that. We know that term. A person who is under the influence of alcohol. Alcohol runs through the bloodstream of that person, all right? Alcohol begins to influence the way that person functions, okay? We know this. Alcohol is in control of the way that person thinks. Alcohol is in control of the way that person acts. Alcohol is in the way, uh, is, in, uh, 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 is, is controlling the way that person reacts. Alcohol has influenced and controls the way that person walks, 
alcohol is influencing and controlling the way that person talks. If you've ever been drunk before, you know what it's like to be under the influence of alcohol. That's why when somebody has a, a, a DUI, a drinking and driving accident, they are, they, that, they're under the influence and they were making horrible decisions and whatever happened in a crash or whatever happened in that situation, it was because they, that, that alcohol was in their bloodstream, okay? Now here's the question from that, 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 that truth, those thoughts. Do you want to be under the influence of alcohol or under the influence of the Spirit of God, all right? Do you want to be under the influence of alcohol or under the influence of the Holy Spirit? I choose the Holy Spirit. Now, think about this. To be filled with the Spirit means that you are now under the influence of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is in control of the way that you think. The Holy Spirit is in control of the way that you act. The Holy Spirit is in control of the way that you react. The Holy Spirit is in control of the way that you walk. Oh, we're walking in wisdom when we're under the influence of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Holy Spirit is in control of the way that you talk. Under the influence of the Holy Spirit. Hey, to be baptized by the Spirit is when the Spirit has total influence over all the areas of our lives. Have you surrendered every area of your life to the Holy Spirit? Oh, hallelujah. Glory to the Lord tonight. How do we walk in wisdom? Allow the Holy Spirit to influence every area of our lives. And do not be drunk with wine in which is dissipation, but be filled with the Spirit. Glory to His name. Praise the Lord. One more thought on this. A lot of people go to alcohol to get a temporary fix, right? Maybe there's something going on. They're looking for a temporary fix. Alcohol produces a temporary high while the Holy Spirit produces an everlasting, come on, peace, joy. All the fruits of the Spirit, they're everlasting, whereas the things of this world are only temporary. Okay, that's the last thought on that. But we're walking in wisdom when we're under the influence of the Holy Spirit. Amen and amen. All right, let's go to verse 19, and we're, we're, we're discussing, we're seeing what this walk of wisdom looks like, aren't we? All right, verse 19 says, Speaking to one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord. When I think about this, you know, the early believers, the early church, a lot of times would sing the Psalms, all right? The Word of God, they would take it and put a melody to it, and they would actually sing the Word, and they would sing the Psalms. When I, when I see Psalms, I know that's, that's meaning a, a musical term, but that is actually something that the early church did. They would take the Word of God, and I'm thinking of Psalms, and they would take it and apply it to, to a melody to it, and they would actually sing it. And I just think that's cool. They were singing the Word of God. And you know what that does? That, not, that helps you memorize uh, the Word. And it also is you verbally glorifying God by singing His Word. So I just thought that that was cool. Uh, uh, the first part of this, you know, when I see this, uh, it says speaking to one another in psalms and that that's as i was thinking about the early believers that that just brought a question do you speak with people speak with one another about the word of god and i and i know where i'm i'm sort of di diverting a little bit from the meaning of this but but hey they they used to sing the psalms they used to sing the word of god so speaking to one another in psalms the Word of God. Do you talk with people about the Word of God? 
Do you have conversations with people, believer or non-believer, about the Word of God? I had some of my most just blessed conversations involves me speaking with people about the Word of God. I get a brother sending me text messages and I have a conversation on a phone call, the word that, that somebody has, has gotten from God and, and we're talking about scripture. I have a meeting in my, in my office doing some mentoring and we're, we're going through the word of God and we're getting real and we're having a safe conversation about things that we don't understand and we do understand and, and how to, to, to reconcile some issues in our hearts and minds. And Those are just some of the richest conversations in, in my life and it's all over the word of God when I'm speaking to one another in Psalms about the Word. I'm speaking about God's Word. Do you speak with people about the Word of God? Amen. Hey, if you get anything from a Sunday sermon, make it a point Monday morning. I'm going to tell somebody about what was spoke yesterday in service. I want to speak to somebody about the Word of God. I think even this sort of is like a challenge to public faith because, because it's like, don't be silent, all right? Don't be a silent Christian, but speak to one another from the Word of God. <laughs> don't be ashamed of Jesus, but, but let the song that is in your heart be heard from your mouth, baby. Amen? Let it come on out and speak to one another. The song that's on your heart, the testimony you have, your victory song, your rescue story. Speak to one another. Tell somebody that story. Amen. I'm getting encouraged by just saying this. <laughs> Glory to his name. All right. So that's the encouragement for that. Speak to one another about the word of God. Just get a word from your devotion in the morning. Again, challenge yourself. Let me tell somebody. I'm going to tell somebody about what I studied this morning from the Word of God. Remember, remember we talked about sitting at the feet of Jesus? Are you picturing yourself this week whenever you get... Right now, tonight, we're sitting at the feet of Jesus and we're hearing His Word, baby. We're taking it in. But now take that word and go speak to somebody about it. Just share it. Let me tell you what we learned about last night in Bible study. Oh, let me just share a little, a little word from God with you, man. This was so encouraging to me. That's a challenge. I challenge you to do that. Speak to somebody about the word of God. Now, the second part of that verse says, singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord. So here it's singing, making melody. I'm thinking about music now. Singing, making melody in your heart. So, so the heart. Well, you know the Bible says whatever's in the heart will come out of the mouth, right? So here's another question I just want to pose to you tonight, all right? What kind of music do you fill your heart with? Let that sink in for just a moment while I get a drink of water. What kind of music do you fill your heart with? All right. Think about it. Music goes into the ears. It goes into our minds. It goes into our heart. Music has a lot of power to it, doesn't it? Music can affect our emotions, Music can be a way to fill our hearts with, with good things or bad things, right? Now, listening to the Word of God, when you do that, you put, a, you put a song in your heart that can have a major encouraging positive impact in your life. What kind of music are you filling your heart with? Because remember, now, now you're alone and you're rolling down the highway or you're doing your thing, you know, during the day. What song are you singing? What's in your heart? What is coming out of your mouth? And that's why I do want to give you another challenge about music. I don't know what kind of music you listen to, uh, but I challenge you. I do. I challenge you. These challenges are out like on Spirit FM and stuff. I challenge you for the next 30 days, if you don't already do this, 
I challenge you to listen to nothing but Christian music, some positive, encouraging Christian music for the next 30 days, and you tell me how that affects your, your mood, your attitude, your thoughts. You know, when you fill your heart with this with this positive, encouraging message from God's Word to Christian music, right? Now you've got a song in your heart, a melody in your heart that you can now let come forth and sing to yourself and bring victory to, you know, encouragement to yourself. He says, singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord. There was many times when I was at, in a, uh, uh, when I used to work at Altec, and I would, I've told a lot of y'all this before, but when I would weld, there's a lot of, of just days where you're by yourself under a weld helmet, and you're just welding, 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 welding. Well, a lot of times, me and the guys would sing, you know, we'd sing, and, and I had a, I had this one song, it was a, a Randy Travis song, Three Wooden Crosses. Now, I'm not a singer, all right? But man, me and a buddy of mine, we was welding. And he starts on one end of a of a of a of a uh, a weld mitt, and I start on the other. And I'm I'm rolling down through there, and I just had that song, so I just started singing it. Well, he he got to singing it. We we just started singing it, and and it was just it was awesome. And we're singing three three wooden crosses right there in Altec welding, and it was just it it lightened up the atmosphere. It just was encouraging to him and I, and and you see what's in your heart, right? Man, it's a beautiful, it's just a beautiful, encouraging thing when you've got God's word, a song in your heart, and you, you can just encourage yourself in the Lord. But uh, anyhow, that's your challenge. If you don't already listen to Christian music, I challenge you for the next 30 days to listen to nothing but Christian music. Put Christian music, positive, encouraging word of God in song in your heart. It is wise to fill your heart with positive and encouraging songs of praise to our awesome Savior. That's what it looks like to walk in wisdom. Man, we're singing to Him. We're speaking to one another. We're talking to people about the Word of God. We've got a song in our heart because that's what we're filling our lives with. That's what it looks and sounds like to walk in wisdom. Amen. All right, verse 20. We're about to wrap up here. It says, giving thanks always for all things to God the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. So to walk in wisdom means that no matter, no matter what trial we may be facing, no matter what storm we may be facing, no matter the circumstances we may be facing, you know that God is still worthy of our thanksgiving and our praise. Come on. Just because of who he is. It says, giving thanks always for all things to God. It's like the verse of scripture that I told you was our life verse, Proverbs 3, verse 5 and 6. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. And lean not into your own understanding. There are going to be things that happen in our lives that we will not understand. But it says in verse 6, Acknowledge him in all thy ways and he shall direct thy paths. That's the part where, where this is talking about. I'm trusting God, but I'm in a situation right now I do not understand. There's a storm, there's a trial, these circumstances. You're just like, what is going on? Wait a second, wait a second. God is in control. I am trusting God. He has the steering wheel. I know who he is. I know what he's done to show me his love. I know the grace, the mercy, the love that he's shown me on the cross. I know he is still worthy of thanksgiving. So I'm going to acknowledge him for who he is and who I know him to be, regardless of my circumstances. And right now I'm thinking of Paul and Silas in the midst of that prison there and they had already been beaten. Here they were at midnight. What were they doing? They were singing, just like what we're talking about. They were acknowledging God. They were giving thanks in the midst of their storm, that their trial, because it was not about that storm. They did they did hey, they was praising God. He was worthy. They even praised him for them being allowed to suffer with Christ. I mean, they had such an amazing mindset. They were totally living their lives from an eternal perspective, were they not? 
And then look how everything turned around. The jailer got saved, his family. I mean, it was just, that's just, that's what I'm talking about. That's awesome. So in the midst of our trials, our storms, we can still praise God and give him praise and glory and honor. That's the walk of wisdom because we're wise enough to know that God is greater than all of our problems and he is in control and he can work it all out for good. And so we're just going to praise him in the midst of the storm, baby. He's worthy. He's worthy. Oh, hallelujah. So what's it look like to walk in wisdom? Giving thanks always for all things to God, the Father, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. We're not thanking him for the storm and all the trials and all. Thank you for my suffering, Lord. No, no. Thank you, Lord, for who you are. And you are faithful. You are love. You are gracious and merciful to me, a sinner. You have saved my soul. Oh, thank you for sending your son to die for me. Thank you for that empty tomb that's given me hope beyond this suffering. Oh, hallelujah. So you see, there's, he's so worthy of our thanksgiving and praise, isn't he? And that's what that walk of wisdom looks like and it sounds like from these verses here in Ephesians chapter 5. Now, the last verse is 21. We're, we're going to wrap this thing up, and I might just save this for next week because this is going to take us right into the next sections of Ephesians 5 and going on into 6 about relationships. Okay, this is sort of where Paul makes a transition, and he's sort of changing things up. This is a pivotal, pivotal moment. This is a pivotal verse even when it says, Submitting to one another in the fear of God. That's what it walk, looks like to walk in wisdom. And we're submitting to one another in the fear of God. And that's what it takes to have successful relationships, marriage, family, work environment, work relationships, okay? It takes this mindset, submitting to one another in the fear of God, all right? We're going to pause right there at verse 21. We'll take off from there next week, and we'll start talking about relationships, marriage, the family, and uh, all from this, this verse right here, we have this mindset of submission, humility. All right. All right, let's pray. And uh, excuse me, we will close uh, this session down. And uh, just thank, let's thank the Lord for this word tonight. Amen. Lord Jesus, thank you. <laughs> Thank you for showing us your will. Thank you for showing us how to walk and how not to walk. Lord God, thank you for showing us and revealing to us, Lord God, what, your, what, what the walk of wisdom looks like. And Lord, I just pray tonight, Lord God, that, that this word becomes alive and relevant and applicable to your people tonight that have received this tonight, Lord God. They'll apply it to their lives tomorrow morning. <laughs> I'm going to tell, so I'm going to speak to somebody about the word tomorrow that I heard last night, that I taught, that I, that I was studying, a part of a study last night. I'm going to tell somebody tomorrow at work, at school, wherever. Lord God, I pray that that challenge, Lord, to go speak about your word would just, would just be on their heart and mind tomorrow, and they would tell somebody about the things that we've learned tonight. Lord, you know every heart tonight. Lord, I pray that you'd bless each person tonight that's joined us. Bless them abundantly with your presence, with your spirit, Lord God. Oh, we want to be under the influence of you, Holy Spirit. Take control of us. Lord, be Lord of our lives. Be Lord of every person's life tonight in a new way, Lord God. In every area of their life, have total control and influence over every area of their lives tonight. May they be walking in your spirit under the total influence of your Holy Spirit, Lord God. Thank you, Lord God. Thank you for this word tonight that's been so rich to our souls. It's been so encouraging. Lord God, thank you. We love you. We praise you and we magnify you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. And everybody said, Clap hands, hearts, thumbs up, amen, hallelujah, glory to God. Hey, I love you all. Uh, again, thank y'all so much for uh, your faithfulness. Tomorrow night, Lord willing, 7 o'clock, prayer meeting, virtual prayer meeting. Uh, we'll be doing that, be uh, able to just 
touch heaven, just seeking his face, standing in the gap. I hope you can join us. Hey, when I post the reminder on here, share it with your, with your, on your page. That way maybe we can get some more people. We're just going to have an awesome session of prayer and uh, Sunday services as normal in person and uh, the online service, the parking lot. Uh, hope y'all have a good rest of the week. We love y'all so much.